Greetings, all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is May 21st, 2023. Jupiter moved into Taurus on Tuesday, May 16th. I'm always paying attention to how these shifts of energies manifest because I'm curious. And literally within a few hours of Jupiter moving into Taurus, I had several things happen that were a bit unusual. There were three people from my past who contacted me, a couple of whom I haven't communicated with in a long time. It was striking because they reached out to me. It was a bit out of the blue. But also, right around that time, I had some other interesting experiences as well, one of which was that I just happened to watch something on one of these streaming platforms that was a movie set back around the turn of the century. And while I was watching that, what happened was I kind of tuned into the energy or the vibe back at that point in time. It was sort of like a flashback, but deeper, because it was like I was temporarily immersed in the energies of that time period around 2000 or the early 2000s. And I was really struck by how nice that energy was compared to what we've been experiencing for quite a few years. The contrast was really dramatic. And then I had to, of course, think about what I experienced at that point in time. And then, of course, the three people I mentioned who contacted me were people I was quite involved with back in those days. Very unusual. The main takeaway, though, was that recent history has been really hard and unpleasant in a lot of ways. Back around the turn of the century, this was just before the dot-com crash and then the housing crisis that followed and all that stuff. There was a much lighter, easier optimistic energy at that point in time. We weren't arguing about all this stupid culture war crap, or if so, it was very peripheral. Pluto was transiting Sagittarius at this time. It didn't move into Capricorn until 2008, and it's just beginning to transit Aquarius now. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is very light compared to Saturn, which rules Capricorn, which followed. You know, we've been in these very stressful energies here for years now, and it's easy to forget how abnormal or weird it is. And that experience around that time when Jupiter moved back into Taurus, because Taurus is ruled by Venus, it's about pleasure. <laughs> it's Venus is not about Venus is not about fighting and arguing and anger or resentment. It just wants to have a good time. But back around the turn of the century and in the late nineties and all that kind of stuff, for the most part, we were having a good time. We weren't facing things like the collapse of the United States or the dismantling of American democracy with the risk of it becoming an authoritarian state. I mean, (laughs) that would have been so far-fetched back then that people would have laughed at you. And so I've been having things come up for me that reflect Jupiter in Taurus. Like, if you mix Jupiter and Venus together, you know, things can get a little gaudy, (laughs) if like because it's over the top. And I've had some things pop up intuitively and just in what I've been observing that reflect those kinds of energies. It's kind of like a fantastical, exaggerated, over-the-top expression of wealth and beauty and throw in some hedonism, you know? Like, that's, that's kind of the energy we're talking about. And that'll be with us for a year. So I have some time to record, and I've been hesitating because this shift of energy is quite significant, and I'm not 100% sure I have figured it out yet. I think what we're going to see is people's priorities are going to change a bit. 
And most people won't be aware of this consciously at all. Most likely, you'll just see it manifest in trends. But like I said, Jupiter and Venus together, it's about good times. <laughs> it's not about struggle and strife and unpleasantness or vulgarities, unless they're hedonistic. So yeah, I've been a little bit unclear because there's something else I want to talk about that's been on my mind for quite a while. It doesn't really fit into that energy I've been describing, but I kind of need to do it because it's kind of like housekeeping. On my channel, I want to have here these things that come up for me and these things that I perceive because I want them on the record. It's always been very important to me to document what I'm perceiving, even if other people don't get it. So that outstanding item is related to a video I published at the very beginning of April called How Democracy Dies. I had to listen to that to make sure I wasn't going to be completely redundant because I have so much content now I can't actually fully recall or remember if I've already talked about something and to what degree. So I had to listen to it. And by the way, I was a bit impressed with myself because that was a very well articulated expression of what I wanted to convey. And so the conclusion to that, or the footnote I want to add to it, is that what we're seeing right now, all this craziness in the world, all these bizarre ideologies being thrust on us, and all these culture wars, like think about the debt limit crisis in the US. The implications of that are almost unthinkable. And it's completely illogical and irrational, except from a very Machiavellian perspective, as far as the Republicans are concerned. And of course, if the U.S. were to default, the harm that it would cause to the American people, including Republican voters, would be literally incalculable. I mean, it's complete insanity. And it's completely, unthinkably irresponsible. And yet that's the world we live in now. Even in the U.K. now, high-profile Brexiteers are openly admitting that Brexit has been a disaster. I mean, you could be charged for stealing a few cans of soup, but politicians can destroy the economy of a G7 nation, driving millions into poverty, and keep their jobs. They should probably be incarcerated. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole too far, but this is how crazy things are. So what I wanted to layer on to that whole discussion, which I described in that episode titled How Democracy Dies, is that, as far as I'm concerned, the dark money groups, the plutocrats, part of their unspoken agenda is to undermine democracy by making it appear that it is ineffectual and dysfunctional and incapable as a means of governance. So what do you do? You make everything look like a clown show. You flood the zone with shit, as Steve Bannon said. You basically humiliate the system to the point where people willfully opt for some other alternative, such as authoritarianism or fascism, which clearly would not be in their best interests. But as far as many people are concerned, democracy is incapable of addressing their concerns because it's been undermined for years and decades deliberately so that it appears that way. So the point I'm trying to make is that the medium is the message. The chaos and the dysfunction is deliberate. It's not just about ideology. It's not just about conservatism versus liberalism, or conservatism against progressivism. Many of these acts that are being done by the Republicans, for example, in the United States, are deliberately intended to make democracy look like a complete train wreck. It's being deliberately undermined and discredited. And this is something that a lot of people, I think, don't understand. They sit there and go like, oh, how can such and such a politician be such an idiot or do something so outrageous or whatever it is. And it goes on and on, right? It's been going on for years. 
the craziness is not happenstance. It's intentional. And it's intended to undermine our system of governance so that hopefully, as far as a few very wealthy individuals are concerned, we will get rid of government as we know it and implement something else which would be much more favorable to them and their own particular desires. So as far as they're concerned, the more the system fails, the better. As far as I'm concerned, this is clearly seditious. Now, can that be proven? I think if we look at all of the evidence empirically and piece it together, as the saying goes, follow the money. <laughs> right? so, so people need to understand that this is not just accidental. Now, whether the fact that some of America's geopolitical enemies benefit in this scenario is a feature or a bug is another question. If that's the case, we are talking sedition and treason. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who are easily manipulated and they're fed a constant stream of disinformation from certain news networks. They are very attached to their own personal grievances, which makes them very easily manipulated, and on and on. Again, back in September of 2021, coming up on two years ago, I published an episode on the Powell Memo, which detailed how the establishment planned to reshape society to basically strengthen their position against everyone else. So it's not much of a stretch of the imagination to accept that what I'm saying is true. And I want this to be on the record that that is exactly what they're doing. The ultra-wealthy have gained so much wealth and power and influence that they literally are trying to reshape society and probably the whole planet to serve their very narrow narcissistic self-interests. And I think we just need to accept that and then we need to root this out and hold these people accountable because they're literally a threat to our existence on many different levels. So that's one thing. The other thing I want to talk about because here in Canada we have these crazy wildfires going on out west and temperatures have been abnormally high for quite some time and it's been very dry and so there have been massive wildfires burning out of control, the smoke from which now is even causing problems in some of the states nearby and in other areas. And people, of course, are freaking out about this because tens of thousands of people had to be evacuated. And it's happened before, a few years ago. Also, I want to be on the record, because I have talked a lot about the environment here, that all of this kind of stuff was predicted many years ago. But of course, a lot of people who benefit or profit from the fossil fuel industry have been trying to suppress or obfuscate the issue. And here we are now facing this crisis that is going to probably continue frequently. It's quite bad. I'm going to put on the screen some projections that NASA made back in 2015, eight years ago. Now, this topic has been discussed much prior to then, but what's interesting about this study is that it showed soil moisture content spanning the decades leading up to the end of the century. And they do it in various scenarios. I'm going to put a video on the screen, courtesy of NASA. Now, they ran different scenarios depending on how quickly we reduced our greenhouse gas emissions or not. But even in the lower case scenarios, we can see that regions extending up as far as into the prairies of Canada are going to become extremely dry relative to norms. And this should be very concerning. There's also been reports recently about how lakes around the world are drying up because it's getting hotter and hotter conditions, of course, cause soils to dry out faster and therefore forests and things like that. And I also talked about this in my episode on the North Node transiting Aries, 
which commences on July 17th. And in that episode, I talked about themes dealing with heat and drought. So that's something to be aware of. If you look at the southwest states or even the southern states, there's going to be long-term problems with water and water availability. Obviously, we need water for agriculture, and many of those regions are currently producing very significant portions of our fresh fruit and vegetables. And so this is going to be a major problem. Of course, all of this, at the very least, could have been mitigated, if not avoided, if humanity wasn't in denial about this problem for decades, if not 50 years or more. There's one other thing I want to talk about. On my channel here, if you go back, I have talked a lot about multidimensional reality, the multiverse, as it were. And I had some flashes and experiences of that very clearly recently. And I conclude from my observations that as the consciousness raises here on Earth, one of the aspects of having a higher consciousness is that we will be experiencing and engaging with reality on other dimensions that we're not necessarily familiar with, that haven't been part of our experience collectively, at least. Yes, certain people and individuals have had experiences of these things, but not on a mass level. And what I got recently was that multidimensional reality will become a more common experience for human beings. And one of the fascinating things about this is that we can kind of be in two places or on different dimensions simultaneously. It's kind of like when you have an out-of-body experience. Your body still exists, but your consciousness is outside of your body. Well, this is similar except that our consciousness can go to different places and different dimensions simultaneously while we still have the awareness of being in our body. When we leave our body in an out-of-body experience, it's almost like our body is put in stasis briefly while we do that. But what I'm talking about is having experiences of reality on different dimensions concurrently or simultaneously and maintaining that awareness. So I have had some flashes were experiences of that recently that were quite striking and very weird. And then I got, like I said, that this is going to become a part of our reality. Eventually, it'll probably take more time for us to shift into that. But I think that it's very unusual, at least compared to what we're familiar with. And it might be something that humanity collectively has never experienced before. And it could freak a lot of people out, because if you're not familiar with these kinds of experiences at all, it can be very alarming. <laughs> to be in your body and with your consciousness somewhere else doing something else at the same time. Very strange. So I had that awareness quite clearly recently as well, and I wanted to share that too. So there's a few little house cleaning things I just wanted to get out there and put on the record. Like I said, I really feel the energies have shifted a lot. And of course, with these other transits coming up, like the North Node moving into Aries, we're in a period of a lot of change. We also had these eclipses recently in April and early May, and those were pretty intense too. The energies lately have been very strange. Also, as I pointed out in my episode on Jupiter transiting Taurus that I published recently, Jupiter will conjunct the North Node on June 1st. So that's something else that's quite significant coming up soon. Remember that some of the most advanced souls on the planet are living on the street. So please don't judge people based on superficial impressions. Don't be shallow, in other words. Anyway, thanks for everything. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all your likes, shares, comments. That's very helpful to me. You can chip in a few bucks if you want now through YouTube. If you're interested in a reading, you can check the episode description for links. I encourage people to practice the intentions I publish. It's extremely urgent that we shift the consciousness here on Earth as quickly as possible. And the more people devote their will and intention to that, the better. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk with you again soon.